I wanted to give you a little demo on how to use uh, range sensor. There's a number of different kind of range sensors, uh, some that use lasers, some that use infrared. Uh, I'm going to talk about the kind that use is ultrasonic sonar, um, and specifically the HCSR04 sensor. Uh, this is a very um, affordable uh, sensor, and it's quite uh, common, so you can find these all over the place. Um, it looks like this. It has these um, ultrasonic emitters and receivers, and it works by sending out a pulse of ultrasonic sound, uh, which bounces off objects and uh, then comes back to the receiver, and it measures the time between sending out and receiving those pulses, uh, similar to how uh, dolphins and bats use echolocation. Uh, the sensor itself uh, just has four pins on it. And looking at these, we've got VCC, trigger, echo, and ground. Uh, the wiring is pretty straightforward, but there is one catch that you need to be aware of if we're going to use the Circuit Playground Express or Bluefruit. Uh, this sensor was designed for use with 5 volt power, which is a problem for our Circuit Playgrounds because they are 3.3 volt devices. So if we um, connected the sensor up to 5 volts, and sent the data from it back to our microprocessor, we could damage it. So we don't want to do that. So what do we do? Well, um, Lady Ada has this helpful wiring tip for us. Um, the ground pin can, is shared. That's fine. We can pull five volts for the sensor from VCC, right? If we recall, VCC comes from the um, power supply. So if we're using USB, it's going to be 5 volts. So that's how we can power the sensor. Um, the trigger for um, sending out the pulse can be 3 volts or 5 volts. So we can connect that directly to an output pin. It's the echo return um, that we have to be careful of because it's going to come back at 5 volts. So uh, we don't want to do that. We want to send, you know, 3.3 or less back to our microprocessor. How do we do it? We use a voltage divider. Um, so what you can see here is a voltage divider to split that 5 volts in half. So we're actually getting a 2.5 volt signal back that's going to our microprocessor. So let me um, walk through everything uh, so that it's super clear over here. So on our breadboard, we've got the ground pin connected to the ground rail, and we've got the VCC pin connected to the power rail, okay? Our sensor, if we look back here, sorry about the focus, um, VCC is purple, um, ground is black, echo is white, and trigger is gray. So purple goes into power, and then the ground, black one, goes into ground. Um, the trigger, I said, is going to be an output from this, so that we're connecting directly to A2. And then the complicated voltage divider over here I've got that echo pin coming to a separate row where there's nothing else, and I'm, I've got it in a voltage divider. So um, one leg of the voltage divider is going to a 10k ohm resistor that goes to ground. The other leg of the voltage divider is going to the A1 pin. Okay, so this comes in at 5 volts and it's getting um, split 
half of it is draining out there and the other half is draining to our pin. Uh, and that works because both these resistors are the same 10k ohm value, okay? Uh, all right, so let's look at the uh, code for this. So here's the code. Um, VCC uh, is going to VCC, ground to ground. Um, echo to A1 via the voltage divider and the trigger to A2. Uh, and that, I, if I'm using an external sensor, I like to um, put this kind of comment in the top of my code so that I remember how to wire up the sensor in the future. This has saved me so many times doing this for external sensors for microprocessors. So get in the habit of doing that. Now, for our pin definitions, I'm using some um, constant variables here to set uh, numeric values for these pin names, so it's a little bit more legible. Um, I'm going to use the LED on pin 13. That's the built-in one up there. And then uh, I've got the echo pin as 6 and the trig pin as 9. But why? Because up here I say echo is A1 and trig is A2. So on the circuit playground, um, the digital and analog pins are kind of shared. Uh, so they, while they're labeled A1 and A2, the sensor is actually using digital information. So it, it's interesting. So we're, we're kind of getting... Um, uh, an analog looking signal back from it, but it's actually uh, doing so in a digital means. So how did how did I know that? Well, if we go to the Adafruit learning page for the circuit playground, I'm using the Express here. So that's what I've got open. And I can go down to this each pin section and it will tell me A1 is D6, A2 is D9, okay? Uh, so that's where I got that from. In my setup, very simple setup, I'm turning on the serial communication and then I'm just setting my pin modes. The trigger pin is an output, the echo pin is an input, and the LED pin is an output. So then in my loop, I've got uh, two variables, long type. So a long is an integer with extra space. Uh, and those are duration and distance. And then this section here is um, how I'm doing the, the echo location, as it were. So I'm taking that trigger pin, I'm setting it to low, I'm delaying microseconds, so these are fractions of a millisecond, um, so a very fast delay. Um, and then uh, I'm writing that pin high, waiting again, and setting it low. After I do that, after I send that ping, I'm going to um, write the, or I'm going to measure the, the pulse in. Okay, so I do pulse in, um, which gives me a long back, which is why I need these variables to be longs. Um, I'm going to pulse in on the echo pin and uh, I'm going to set that to high and that's going to be my duration. So I can also um, look at this in the reference if I want to. Um, so let's do that. in advanced IO, oh boy. Reads a pulse, either high or low, on a pin. For example, if a high pulse in, if value is high, pulse in waits for the pin to go from low to high, starts timing, then waits for the pin to 
go low and stops timing, returns the length of pulse in microseconds or give is up and returns zero if no complete pulse was received within the timeout. Timing of the function has been determined empirically and probably show errors for longer pulses. Works on pulses from 10 microseconds to three minutes in length. Okay, so that's that's doing the the measuring. Um, and if we recall, right, we're turning this off, waiting, turning it high for ten milliseconds, and then low. So we're doing a ten millisecond um, pulse. Um, to calculate the distance, then, so that's going to give us um, a, a long. Uh, variable in uh, it's going to give us the length of the pulse in microseconds um, which isn't terribly useful to us uh, so this is an equation that I just looked up on how to get that microsecond um, pulse duration into uh, a distance in centimeters okay so uh, we might be able to change this for other um, units if we so desired, but centimeters is fine for now. Um, and so that's giving us the, the, the distance right from the sensor. Then we can do whatever we want with that distance value once we've calculated it. Um, so one of the things I'm doing is if the distance is less than 10, turn on the LED, otherwise turn the LED off. And another thing I'm doing is if the distance is um, greater than or equal to 400 or the distance is less than or equal to zero print out of range otherwise print that distance value and then delay half a second so that we're only checking the sensor every half a second that's kind of arbitrary um, and you can see running down here the sensor is is going and that's how far the ceiling is from my desk right if I just hold it like that. Now maybe it's hitting the camera. <laughs> so the camera is 22 centimeters from the desk. Um, if I bring my hand in, there we go. So under 10 centimeters, that LED comes on. And then over it, it goes off. I can get close, very close to the sensor. Um, And until I'm like actually touching the sensor, it doesn't go uh, out of range. The sensor, so why am I using this distance range? That's that's like the, um, the best range of the sensor, sensor um, beyond 400 um, centimeters. Uh, the sensor can no longer pick up stuff or the data that you're gonna get from it is gonna be um, uh, inaccurate or not reliable. Um, there's the there's the ceiling again. So this is kind of neat. So 400 centimeters. That's like four meters, um, or what? A little bit more than 12 feet. So that's a 12 feet down to about half an inch. That's pretty good uh, range that you can measure with this sensor. You can hear if you listen. Uh, very carefully, it's quiet, and if your ears are good, a very slight um, clicking that the, the microphone's probably not picking up. Um, so that's one thing to be mindful of. Uh, and again, the most important thing for us using this sensor, which is a five volt sensor with the circuit playground, is to use this voltage divider um, so we don't damage our microprocessor. Uh, but that's it. That's how to measure range with the HC SR04.